But speaking of dishing out damage, Chi Yu is fully capable of dishing out damage immediately, and that will be paired alongside the Grim Snarl up against that Rillaboom and the Smeargle. I think it's time to uh, reflect on your favorite Chi Yu damage calculations, <laughs> as while there is no sun on the field and there is no choice specs either on that Pokemon, I do believe a overheat would be more than enough damage to threaten a knockout on this Rillaboom, despite the Assault Vest, and of course deal significant damage to that Smeargle as well. It is not safe for Eduardo to keep this Rillaboom on the field as long as the Chi Yu is present. Even if Aurelian decides to maybe switch out the Chi Yu for some reason, you still run the risk of that Pokemon being paralyzed by the Grim Snarl. All right, well, that is the Rillaboom switching out in fear of the Chi Yu, and it is the Choice Scarf Urshifu in the back. That Rapid Strike style is able to deal with the opposing Chi Yu as a Heat Wave will connect onto both Urshifu and Smeargle. Of course, Smeargle does survive with the Focus Sash, and no burns have come through, so it's just going to be a spore, but blocked by the safety goggles of Aurelian's Urshifu's Rapid Strike. Eduardo correctly realizing that as soon as the Choice Scarf or Shifu was on the field, there was really nothing that Chi Yu could do to stop a Surging Strikes from picking up that KO. If you put the opposing Grim Snarl to sleep, it can only set up a Reflect or a Light Screen or a Thunder Wave, not one, two, or three. But Aurelian making a amazing switch there to send in his Safety Goggles Pokemon to take that Spore and now threaten a return knockout on the Smeargle removing that threat from the game. Yep, there is the Grim Snarl coming back in outside of the Chi Yu as Smeargle tries to protect Eduardo's Urshifu. So it uses the follow me to become the center of attention while the surging strikes will connect with Grim Snarl. Not enough to pick up the one hit KO, but will be able to threaten a two hit KO uh, even after grassy terrain recovery, it looks like. So we'll be able to uh, potentially pick that up on the next turn. However, Smeargle does finally go down to a single surging strike from the Rapid Strike style Urshifu. So Aurelian takes an early lead. And that's the Smeargle out of the way for Eduardo. And the Smeargle didn't really accomplish a whole lot. All it has to show for itself is 50% of damage on that Grimmsnarl. I think you're okay with losing Grimmsnarl though after a single turn moving forwards. Eduardo has a bit of a difficult decision to make here. If you assume that the Grimmsnarl will have one more turn on the field, Chances are that Grimmsnarl player is going to choose a reflect or a light screen mm -hmm. to set up so that once the Grimmsnarl is down, it's still providing utility for the team. If you send in and you reveal your Calyrex Shadow Rider, you guarantee that that screen that's going to be set up <laughs> will be the light screen, mm -hmm. as the Urshifu Rapid Strike can just play around it with the critical hits from the Surging Strikes regardless. If you send in the Rillaboom here, you could trick your opponent into thinking, oh, I should probably just set up Reflect so that the Rillaboom is not as big of a problem as it could be. We'll have to see, though, if Aurelian is able to correctly predict that it is the Calyrex Shadow Rider as Eduardo's final Pokemon revealed this turn. The other major thing about Rillaboom is it will have access to Fake Out to prevent the Grimmsnarl from even moving this turn, allowing Eduardo to just bring that Calyrex Shadow Rider in for free. So blocking the damp, blocking any kind of prankster ability from the Grimmsnarl for this turn, as Urshifu just goes for a close combat into the Rillaboom, dealing good damage to that Pokemon. And now this this uh, safety goggles Urshifu has dropped its defenses, which does make it vulnerable to the Rillaboom. Grimmsnarl will be using the prankster ability to set up a screen or that thunder wave okay. this turn for the benefit of its partners. Now, the one thing Rillaboom can do this turn is because grassy terrain is still active on the field, it can also make an attack using that priority tier. And when two Pokemon attack using the same priority tier, we end up with the same speed decisions that are made when the priority tier just isn't there. So if this Rillaboom is trained to be faster than the opposing Grimmsnarl, Eduardo has found a way to eliminate the threat of these shields by simply going for a Grassy Glide to target down that Pokemon. Well, Chi Yu comes in and Rillaboom is faster than the Grimmsnarl. There will be no screens and there will be no Thunder Waves connecting with that Calyrex on Eduardo's side. That means that Eduardo is entirely safe to go for a nasty plot here on the Calyrex. And this Calyrex 
you know, it's it's got plus two. This is not the draining kiss variant of the uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider. Instead, it is Psy Shock. So the uh, Chi Yu actually is in a very strong position against the Calyrex, being able to resist the Astral Barrage and be immune to the Psy Shock. But if Calyrex starts getting more boosts, and of course, specifically to use partner Pokemon, are not going to want to take either the Psy Shock or an Astral Barrage. Aurelian is in a very tough spot here because if Eduardo decides that the Chi Yu is the target of choice, you Grassy Glide into the Chi Yu to break the potential of a Focus Sash, and then you Astral Barrage pretty comfortably to deal the amount of damage most likely needed to pick up that KO. Even if you decide to wait a turn to see if the Chi Yu will opt for Protect, as this one does carry Protect, there's really not much that this Urshifu Rapid Strike can do. It can attack through a potential Protect on the Calyrex Shadow Rider, but that's not gonna be enough for a knockout. And it could also try and target down the opposing Rillaboom, but that might not be enough for a knockout either. Well, that's a protect from the Calyrex and a protect from the Urshifu. And you see Chi Yu went for the overheat into Eduardo's Calyrex. You saw Eduardo hovering over the terrestrialization button there to switch to the Fairy type to resist the Dark Pulse. But Aurelian showing and Eduardo choosing not to do that because of the threat of the overheat, which would not have cared one whit about that terrestrialization. So Eduardo now has been able to maneuver the Choice Scarf Urshifu facing down the Chi Yu on the other side. And this, uh, these Calyrex and this uh, Urshifu, uh, I think they can both pick up KOs this turn. They can, and you have to assume that Aurelian's final Pokemon in the back of their party is going to be that Terrapagos, which, yes, it does have the Terra Shell ability, and yes, it wouldn't take any damage from an Astral Barrage, but that is such a risky switch to make, because as soon as that Terra Shell is mm -hmm. gone, you are going to be taking super effective damage from a close combat from this Urshifu. So even though it may seem like the Surging Strikes would be the better play just to ensure that you get a super effective KO on the opposing Chi Yu, by locking into close combat here, you ensure that you're going to be able to hit the Terrapagos as hard as possible for the remainder of this game, which is way more important than your end game than the Urshifu and the Chi Yu on the field together. Yeah, the close combat just hits every Pokemon better than the Surging Strikes, as you can see with that Urshifu picking up the KO onto Chi Yu. Terrapagos will switch in, so Aurelian will be able to get this, uh, this Terrapagos out on the field without taking any damage from either the Calyrex or the Urshifu, but it did take sacrificing the Chi Yu to do so. And now it's just Terrapagos and just the Urshifu that is not Choice Scarfed on Aurelian's side. Now, the one benefit here is that because Urshifu is Choice Scarfed, you will be able to resist with your Terra Shell the, uh, the more powerful close combat. But at that, after that, what, what do you do? It's very tough, right? I think that this Terrapagos is almost forced to terrestrialize here and go for the Terra Star Storm and hope that that's enough damage to deal KOs for both Pokemon on the field. If you try and focus in on the Calyrex with a Dark Pulse, if you miss that KO, you're going down to two close combats regardless from the Urshifu. If you try to only focus in on the Urshifu and the Calyrex goes for a Psy Shock this turn to break your Terra Shell and then goes for a Psy Shock next turn alongside of an attack from that Rillaboom, you're in the same end game essentially. Nope, you nope. have to go for the spread damage here and try and find your way back in. Otherwise, Eduardo's Pokemon advantage is just going to lock him in this game one. All right, well, that is the terrestrialization for the Terrapagos on Aurelian's side. That will be a protect coming out from Eduardo's own Calyrex, while Aurelian will also be protecting and detecting the Urshifu on their side. That is the close combat from the Choice oh. Scarf Urshifu, and without the Terra Shell, that Terrapagos takes full damage from that close combat. It's not enough for a one-hit KO, but it is easily enough to be picked up by a Psy Shock. The Terra Star Storm will be able to pick up the KO on the Urshifu in return, but Eduardo still has the Rillaboom in the back, which will threaten Fake Out that this Terrapagos cannot dodge. It also could not dodge a Grassy Glide at this point in mm -hmm. time. So Eduardo just has all the opportunity here to go on the offense and lock in this win. 
If Aurelian wants to win, he needs to find an opportunity to land an attack against this Calyrex Shadow Rider, and I just don't think he has it necessarily. The Urshifu is going to be naturally slower than that Pokemon, so it's mm -hmm. going to be unable to land a Surging Strikes into that spot. And honestly, given that we've seen Eduardo choose the Citrus Berry as the held item on that Calyrex Shadow Rider, that almost guarantees that one Surging Strikes alone will not be enough for the knockout. Absolutely, but you know what is enough for the knockout? A single Astral Barrage into the Safety Goggles Urshifu. Easy one-hit KO. The only reason it didn't pick up both is because Terrapagos is immune. But because of the fake out, that Pokemon has been flinched, cannot move, and in one more turn, Eduardo will take game one, and we'll be headed to game two. I think that Eduardo played a very safe game throughout this game one, which is exactly the kind of game you paralysis. Yeah, typically on these teams, you do Ooh. see a choice scarf Pokemon two outs be Calyrex Shadow Rider in particular. But okay. Aurelian making a huge pivot in this turn one of game two with the Fluttermane and the Chi Yu on the field against the opposing Shadow Rider Calyrex and Rillaboom. Yeah, I love this adjustment from Aurelian. The booster speed on the Fluttermane being able to start adding some speed control here. Fluttermane is now the fastest thing on the field and immune to fake out. Also has access to Icy Wind to drop Calyrex's speed and deal super effective damage onto the Rillaboom, which is not insignificant, which would allow this Chi Yu to start being able to threaten the Urshifu that we've seen before, the Smeargle that we've seen before, and any of the Pokemon that are on Eduardo's team. It is very likely that a single Icy Wind speed drop would allow this Chi Yu to outspeed the opposing Calyrex Shadow Rider. If you're confident in that play, you then terrestrialize your Chi Yu into the ghost type so you don't have to worry about being flinched. You get that early KO, and then all of a sudden we have a very different game. As a result here, Eduardo has to account for that play in his play style, and he also has to account for the fact that Aurelian could just predict a huge overheat into that Rillaboom like we try like he tried to go for in the previous game. And this Terra Fire will stop that. Yeah, Eduardo has been forced into this fire terrestrial by the pressure of the Flutter Main and the Chi Yu BFFs on the field. The Icy Wind will not connect with the Calyrex, but will connect with the Rillaboom, dropping the speed just a little bit, but not doing super effective damage. In fact, not very effective damage because of that terrestrialization. Same thing with this Heat Wave. Rillaboom is not going to be worried too much about that damage at all, thanks to the combination of Assault Vest and the terrestrialization. And the Wood Hammer is enough to pick up the one-hit KO on the Flutter Main. So Aurelian had pressure. It is gone now. It is gone until we see the reveal of their next Pokemon. Yes, there will be no more speed control on the field for Aurelian. It is very possible that Aurelian uses this opportunity to reveal the Grimmsnarl if it is waiting in the back of their party. Now with no fake out threats on the field, you can go for a screen and you can get your defenses up that way. Instead, it looks like it's the Terrapagos making yeah. an appearance. Terra Shell is still intact and there's a terrestrialized Pokemon on the field too. So if you want to lock in your own terrestrialization to that Terra Star Storm to deal the super effective damage to the Rillaboom and deal decent spread damage to the Calyrex Shadow Rider, it's a great opportunity for that as well. Yeah, that's an excellent switch in here. Terrapagos is not threatened by either of these Pokemon right now. Calyrex cannot hit it with the Astral Barrage, has to use the weaker Psy Shock, which will be able to get through the Terra Shell if Rillaboom goes for the Grassy Glide. But I don't think that's enough to pick up the KO. And because Eduardo has already used the Terrastalization, it was forced on the Rillaboom. This Calyrex is weak to either the Dark Pulse from the Chi Yu or the Dark Pulse from the Terrapagos. And so you can just cover every option here. You can cover every option. And I think that's exactly why we see the Rillaboom mm -hmm. retreat this turn in favor of the Smeargle. Smeargle will certainly be able to take an attack or two from the Pokemon on Aurelian's side of the field, but what I find the most curious is that with no terrestrialization on the Terrapagos, we're Ooh. seeing one Dark Pulse from the Chi Yu. Oh. That's enough for a KO. Are we going to see a follow-up now from the Terrapagos? Terrapagos gets a turn now. Its Terra Shell has been broken, but a Terra Star Storm, a single target non-Terra, will bring Smeargle down to the Focus Sash. So that is a big KO 
Aurelian has lost the Fluttermane, but Eduardo has lost the Calyrex. And we have only seen two supporty Pokemon on Eduardo's side so far, the Rillaboom and the Smeargle. And unfortunately for Eduardo, uh, those Pokemon have, or one of those Pokemon has already Terrastalized and uh, is not going to like being next to the Terrapagos. It is not, and that's exactly why we see the Choice Scarf or Shifu making an appearance on the field once again for Eduardo. I like this positioning though, because this will either force a terrestrialization on the Chi Yu. It'll potentially force a switch on that Chi Yu. If you think back to the previous game, we saw the Grimmsnarl actually switch in for the Chi Yu to take a potential surging strikes here. Mm -hmm. So there is plenty of opportunity for Eduardo to take advantage of some passive play, maybe try to land a spore on one of the Pokemon on Aurelian side of the field, assuming you anticipate the switch. That being said, with a switch of his own, Eduardo looking to have fake out next turn and just remove Ooh. the Chiyu from the field right off the bat. And no switches from Aurelian means that Chiyu is going down to those surging strikes from the Choice Scarf Urshifu on Eduardo's side. With Rillaboom switching in, Smeargle will be preserved for the future, potentially to have fake out pressure uh, in other turns of the game. The Terra Star Storm, though, again, that Choice Specs Terra Star Storm picks up a one hit KO on the Choice Scarfed Urshifu. So now it is Smeargle and Rillaboom up against Terrapagos and a mystery Pokemon on Aurelian's side, and it is the Iron Hands. Aurelian left the Grimmsnarl at home, does not need to use those screens, instead is going to use the Fake Out pressure to try to find a way to break through these two supporter Pokemon. Eduardo can go for Fake Out onto the Terrapagos. He go to Fake Out on both you can of go them. for the fake out on either <laughs> of them, but I think regardless of which Pokemon you target, you have to be very careful about the Iron Hands. If I were Aurelian, the number one thing I'd be afraid of this turn is my Terrapagos getting put to sleep by a Spore, given that it cannot protect. And given this amazing defensive terrestrialization from Aurelian to make the Iron yeah. Hands immune to Spore, this just makes it that much easier for Aurelian to bring us into a game number Number three. Yeah, not just immune to Spore, but also this Rillaboom is not going to be able to do anything to this Iron Hands. Only has access to Grass-type attacks and U-Turn, which does do a little bit of damage, but because the Rillaboom is not a Bug-type Pokemon, not as much as you might hope. Probably able to keep the, uh, keep the health up with the Drain Punch. And as this grassy terrain is healing up the Pokemon on the field, you have to worry that that Terrapagos is going to get back to its Terra Shell. Smeargle is really a interesting Pokemon in this position as well because it has no attacking moves. Mm -hmm. It was able to accomplish a lot by putting that Terrapagos to sleep, but really this final showdown is between the <laughs> Rillaboom and the opposing Pokemon and with a instantaneous wake up from the Terrapagos, that Terra Star Storm bringing the Rillaboom down into the red as long as Iron Hands is able to connect an attack yeah. into the Rillaboom with the Drain Punch for that KO, we're gonna be heading into a Game number three. Terrapagos on Aurelian's teams. Like, I know it's been a long day. Trust me, I believe you. But I am not ready to go to sleep just yet. I want a game three. I want to compete in the championship match tomorrow on Championship Sunday. And that is going to be a game three force. This Smeargle unable to do any damage to Aurelian's Pokemon despite the moody boosts. <laughs> it's trying its best. That was the second turn in a row that it was able to get a special attack boost, but just completely. Yeah, and once all threats of any type of speed control have been removed as well. That is again the booster energy Fluttermane and the Chi Yu on the field, but a huge adjustment here from Eduardo. We are seeing the Raging Bolt. So we are used to seeing the Calyrex out here nasty plotting and trying to boost its attack. But we also have a throwback, the Calm Mind Raging Bolt here, which while it is going to be weak to uh, Moonblast uh, from the Fluttermane and Icy Wind, if you can get some of those special defense boosts and special attack boosts, 
You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay because if Aurelian wants to utilize the pressure that Icy Wind plus the speed boost on the booster energy gives to that Flutter main later on once the Shadow Rider Calyrex makes an appearance, they're going to have to keep that Pokemon on the field. And that's going to be a very difficult task for them to do, knowing that Woodhammer from the Rillaboom was more than enough to pick up that KO in the previous game. Just like in game two, a Terrastalization has been forced out of the Rillaboom. And this time around, Aurelian will be protecting the Fluttermane, trying not to take any damage. Also gets the Protect out of Raging Bolt on turn one, while Chiyu goes for an Overheat. Now it will be resisted, so Rillaboom takes uh, minuscule da damage relatively. But that's still, you know, that was a resisted Assault Vest boosted uh, attack. And it still did about 30% of the damage. So that's a big that's a big chunk away from Rillaboom. And now Fluttermane and Raging Bolt have both used their protect. They have, and the Chiyu has taken a special attack drop as well, which means it probably doesn't want to stay on the field. What can Aurelian switch in to try and take some damage here? Terrapagos' Terra Shell certainly will help it live through this turn, but that's a huge thing to give up knowing that it's one of the best Pokemon you have in this matchup overall. Ooh, a Thunderclap comes out from Eduardo, connects on the Fluttermane, oh. doubling up on priority, oh. but it's not enough. Fluttermane survives with a sliver of hit points and fires back a big Moonblast. Raging Bolt goes down to about 30% of its own health here after the grassy, uh, grassy terrain recovery and the Fluttermane holding on for one more turn. Terrapagos, though, got on the field for free that turn because mm -hmm. Eduardo used his priority moves to double target that Fluttermane, and it was not enough. Now this Raging Bolt is certainly within KO range from a Terra Star Storm, and given that the Rillaboom has Terraptalized already, this seems like a great opportunity to go for a Stella Terra on your own Terrapagos to start dealing big damage, and Eduardo actually sends in the Calyrex Shadow Rider to try and take damage for Rillaboom this turn. Calyrex needs to do something here, and Eduardo needs to get damage out of that Pokemon, maybe hoping that Aurelian has been showing a non terrestrialized Terra Star Storm to get the entire game one and game two. Maybe he could take an immunity here, but no. Aurelian is terrestrializing that Terrapagos. The Stellar Terra has been activated, which means that Terrapagos's Terra Star Storm is fully online. Aurelian is also protecting the Fluttermane for this turn, so no Thunderclap can come through on that Pokemon. Instead, it is just going to be the Calyrex switching in and damage coming out from the Terrapagos. Terra Star Storm hits both Pokemon, picks up the KO onto the Raging Bolt and deals a critical hit on the Raging Bolt even and a little bit over 50% to that Calyrex. Terrapagos will not be able to protect itself as it is holding that Choice Specs item, which means that Eduardo has plenty of time to send in that Rillaboom, use Fake Out to stop it from attacking, utilize an Astral Barrage to pick up a KO onto the Fluttermane to get a Grim Nay boost and start that Calyrex's progression towards victory, towards that championship match tomorrow. But Terrapagos is still at full health, Mm -hmm. It still threatens a ton of damage when it is going to be able to attack. And Eduardo has to play very carefully here because Fluttermane still has the threat of an icy wind. If you focus too much on that Terrapagos, a speed drop here on the Calyrex would allow the Chiyu to come back in and threaten big damage. So prioritizing the KO onto the Fluttermane with Grassy Glide does mean that your Calyrex will be a little bit safer to go for a nasty plot, but that's not damage. That's not damage. It's potential damage. It's future damage, but it's not damage right now. Aurelian has damage right now. Terra Star Storm will connect to both of these Pokemon, be super effective on the Rillaboom because it has Terrastalized and picks up the KO through the Assault Vest onto Rillaboom. That is going to be a little bit of health remaining on the Calyrex. And it did get that plus two boost from the nasty plot. And it needs to make something happen immediately. Well, fortunately for this Calyrex, its best friend Smeargle with Wide Guard. Or sorry, that, that's actually Urshifu mm -hmm. with the Choice Scarf. Is Smeargle the stayed home. Final Pokemon for Eduardo. 
Our Shifu does threaten to be faster than the opposing Pokemon on the field, but the Iron Hands has Fake Out. That wouldn't hit the Calyrex Shadow Rider anyways. There's nothing stopping Aurelian from picking up this KO. It is just a couple of Terra Star Storms away before this Terrapagos takes Aurelian Sola to the finals of the North American International Championships. Big damage on Urshifu, it actually survives with six hit points. Will be able to actually deal a little bit of damage back. It will be faster than the Calyrex, so can, and actually the Terrapagos has already terrestrialized. It has. But it is, I don't know that this is enough damage. The fact that Astral Barrage cannot hit the Terrapagos, I don't think Eduardo has it. It's a very tough call to make here because if you are Eduardo and the Shadow Rider Calyrex, you have to utilize Psyshock this oh. turn. But Terrapagos is able to hold on through the close combat and the Psyshock will target down the Iron Hands. And that's a one hit KO. Terrapagos, the Pokemon from the most recent expansion to Scarlet and Violet, introducing us to this miraculous stellar Terra type will be able to connect with both Pokemon on Eduardo's side of the field for this knockout. The stars come down and the stars have aligned for Aurelian Sola to advance to the finals of the North American International.